another jab. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the Brennan Dorman slash Gemini MMA channel. This is a George St. Pierre breakdown based upon his jabs, takedowns, distance management, and why it led to such a great and long career. So, let's start with uh, Koscheck. Now, Koscheck is known for an overhand right. That was his power strike. So, Two of the things you want to do against somebody like that is either jab inside of that, double jab, or you can also counter with a fade right left hook, which I had shown earlier. What I wanted to show here is the distance that George creates. So he, he crouched down first, going or, or making the perception there that he was going for a takedown in order to spring up and create all that distance. Now here's what I call the close leg Superman punch. Let's see his legs are close together. This way he could he could have been faking a teep there or some kind of left kick. Now look how he went from there all the way to covering that distance. The reason it lands flush is its its speed, the the way that it's hidden and um and the distance covered. So here we go. Here's another level change one, right? See his position he's in? That certainly looks like it could be a double leg. And instead he does the same thing where he springs up from that low left-handed position, just like a Roy Jones jab, pop jab, whatever you want to call it. Um, it. It's masked. So it's the whole keeping the opponent guessing thing. It's it's Morimoto. You know, he, he has a famous quote that the second you make your opponent flinch, the battle is already won. And, you know, there's a lot of truth to that. But you have to land things first. So... This is a good example of when George's wrestling started hitting kind of a, a next level. Look at this double leg on Sean Shirk, who himself was a great grappler. And you know it takes a certain type of athleticism for sure. And you've got to set you've got to set all these things up. You know if someone knows it's coming and they have any ability at all. You know. So here's against BJ Penn. Now BJ's notoriously good at staying on his feet and avoiding takedowns because he has great balance. So George's approach. Um, against BJ and this is their first fight which BJ got him pretty pretty well boxed up in the first round George had to be pretty gritty to come back in the second and third rounds in a super tight fight he had to change up what kind of takedowns he was using so they were very judo-esque sambo-esque now see that top left over the the uh, right shoulder of BJ to change direction on that single he does that again in their second fight as well see this kind of he kind of cracks down, meaning he takes all of his weight and cracks it like his shoulder down towards the knee of BJ. 
And another fight where he used kind of the judo sambo school right here. This is against Matt Hughes in the third fight. Look at that. That's a running knee tap. And in judo, there's, there are throws called running throws. I'm not going to give you the Japanese name because I'll butcher it. Um, but what you want to see here is how that knee sets that up. And now look at where he's planting his left. George goes down, sort of like you'd go down for an ankle pick. It's, it's a knee pick. It's the same thing. But... Um, and they call it a running throw in judo. So here he transitions the same way, but the other, the other side obviously is using his left leg as his fulcrum here rather than his arm. So he's going to step forward. Now look at how he's trapping on the tricep there with Hughes right over his hip. And now he's going to elbow right once he's in position, which is side mount. And it's beautifully executed. Now with Matt Serra, I think after the first fight, this was George's first maybe conservative fight he had seen where he was pawing out his jab a lot but then ducking under and or kicking kicks or whatever it takes. See that little ankle pick he did at the end there? That was very nice. And I'm just I'm just winging this. I, I tend to do that, everyone. I hope you don't mind. I'm just calling this as I see it. I put together a bunch of clips and then I just kind of give you my commentary. So this is, this is kind of to, a twofer. Right, so it's it's reactionary in the fact that Koscheck threw a meaningless left kick, but George is also shooting from a great distance, and Koscheck was one of one of the first decorated All-American wrestlers that George really uh, got the best of in the wrestling exchanges. Dan Hardy was more known for his striking, um, and just kind of being a wild man. George, I remember in this fight, he called him like Rubber Man or something afterwards, because he almost submitted Dan. With, I think, a Kimura and an arm bar, and he just couldn't get the guy to tap. So, in the second fight here with BJ, you're going to see a lot of, of the same, because re normal wrestling-type takedowns just don't seem to do it for BJ. See here, the same thing with the single, getting him off balance, change of direction, left arm over the shoulder. That, that to me, is very Sambo-esque. That, I, I would call a judo double leg, where you kind of scoop the opponent up. Um, that's a reactionary one. One of the things you want to notice is in that BJ fight, if you ever get a chance to watch the whole thing, is his guard passing ability is incredible. Now, this is the same thing with the single leg in misdirection as far as turning corners. Um, Weidman does this v very well. Um, it's the John Danaher school, to be honest, uh, of takedowns. Even someone like Gary Tonin you'll see doing a lot of this. There's a sideways drag, which is, you know, that's very... It's just grappling 101. It's not really one particular style, I guess. And with Tiago Alves, you had an incredible kickbox. So what you want to notice on this takedown here is George is striking first. Look at that lean back. That is just wonderful. Doesn't it look like Mayweather, how he would dodge a jab and then cross counter with his right and instead shoots down with that power? Now watch this as he tries to shrug up, which is good defense by Alves. George embraces that to get a high underhook on Tiago and still continue the, with the takedown. Now here's kind of a, you know, a menage clip, if you will, where he's, he's just starting to put things together. So, boom, caught kick. And, and Tiago, another thing he's known for is vicious leg kicks. So George is just queuing off of them. And you got to say that, you know, the distance management thing, one thing I want to mention before I forget while, I'm, while I still have time in this video is a lot of it's got to do with point fighting. And I know him, myself, um, Wonderboy Thompson I've had the conversation with. Uh, I know Michael Venom Page, who I know is not quite at this level yet, but all of us feel like point fighting helped our distance management quite a bit. Now, I never have been the takedown artist that George is by any means, but I, I've always had good takedown defense. And I think that's got something to do with it. So, one thing that was always super impressive with him was how well he would do against other All-American type, you know, decorated wrestlers. John Fitch being one of them. And he would just go in there and out-wrestle these guys. And people would laugh at him at first, saying he wouldn't. And uh, it was just two quick clips with Fitch and Koscheck. Condit's a little more sinewy. He's a guy that's dangerous off his back. Obviously a great striker. Now here he's trying to Kimura lock, and George has kind of like a high crotch there, and instead he just went for a trip, goes for a back take, but kind of it's very good off his back. See how he falls odd a lot? 
Now it's, again, I put uh, putting it all together sequence. So you got one, one, two, one, two. Duck down against the fence, and he scoops out his legs again. That's it's kind of from the judo school of scooping like that. Now that's a beautiful counter to Nick Kimura. Nick uh, Diaz loves that Kimura trap. He'll use it for a takedown into a submission. I've seen him do instructionals on it even. There's turning the corner again. It's very wide Minesky did it versus Vitor in their most recent fight. And these reactionary takedowns, it just takes timing and it's distance management. Again, I'll, I'll reference George's point fighting background. And, you know, when you have people guessing whether or not they're going to get punched in the face high or, you know, you're going to shoot literally through them with an athlete as explosive as him with a takedown and you've got to guess which one's coming there again is that counter trap or counter to the Kimura trap and I wanted to point out this little small detail look at George's hands right here this is just fantastic jujitsu and again it's just when you work with John Danaher and people at that level and Faraz by you know himself you'll realize that there's there's not a stone that goes unturned. I put a little cool little guard pass here. Um, it's, it's noteworthy. Um, George's guard passing is as good as anyone's uh, has ever been in MMA, really. Nice little scoop. And I, again, I said putting it all together. Now he's really it's round four within that kind of fight that he had gotten clipped earlier. And nice high kick. There's a Superman little combo. And then as soon as Condit lets himself get tall, George gets him right back down. There's a little outside leg. Boom. That's a nice little jumping switch kick. You don't see much from George. Left hook into the takedown off the cage. And he really outclassed Diaz. No offense, Diaz fans. I know you guys get a little crazy. Here's a nice thing you don't see often. Look at this deep half guard escape I put a la Jeff Glover. Um, some people would say a la Bernardo Faria, but I like Jeff Glover. He's a good American grappler. Now this is really cool. Uh, this is like what I would call cage grappling, where you're kind of using it for your distance. And Condit's defense is, is, you know, really good on a lot of these things. Which you shouldn't take. This is just, this is old school Carol Parisian when he was tapping everybody and taking them down with his judo throws. And it just takes, you know, some next level to get this athleticism. Now he's going to try to look at Carol's right right hip. So he's going to come up and take his other arm out so now he can bend that arm straight so now what George has to do is reposition his hips so he opens out so he's gonna replant to use kind of a pendulum effect so this way he can do that kind of Hicks and Gracie sweep invisible jiu-jitsu thing where you bridge off of your neck and kind of roll at a 45 and in, in behind you and I said I'd, I'd be remiss not to to do a uh, honorable mention of his takedown defense so let's take a look at this and uh, we'll do it one more time here. This is against Koscheck, and he had a deep, deep high crotch single right there. In sprawling, it's all about controlling their head, kicking your legs out, and spreading them, having heavy hips, and then getting an over and or underhook. And um, this was just just a brilliant, brilliant example of that. One of one of his best takedown defenses ever. So thanks for watching, everybody. Cheers.